Hi, I'm Nicholas Lodge and would like to introduce you to my new Flower Pro Poinsettia. This amazing mold will make beautiful realistic poinsettias or you could use this also for fantasy poinsettias as well. So first of all, this is the mold. Um, as you can see, uh, like all of my Flower Pro molds, beautifully detailed. So it has obviously lots of components on here. This is the cyathium, which is obviously basically the flower center. So there's actually three parts to this, the little heart-shaped one, the one that's got a pair of like lips on it, and the one that looks a little bit like an onion or a bulb. It's got like a little feathery top to it. Um, so those are going to be uh, made in a yellow, shade of yellow, or in fantasy's case you could do these in obviously different colors. And then these are the bracts, so obviously these ones would be made generally in color, in white, pink, red. I'm going to show a red traditional poinsettia, but again could be done in fantasy colors. Poinsettias come in many, many colors, like hot pink, and there's now like ones, varieties, hybrids with like splattered white on red, coral color. And then these are going to be the green bracts or the leaves, all right? Um, so um, this is the uh, actual poinsettia main part of the mold. And then this is the back uh, part of the poinsettia. Uh, another one of my new Nicholas Lodge brand products is my new um, blackberry and oak leaf. And I use this to, you'll see on that video as well, to vein the back of this. You can even use this like on my Flower Pro fern. So this is a wonderful veiner for backs of many, many leaves, all right? Um, and uh, so you're going to see how this all works. I'm using uh, here, as with uh, all of my Flower Pro projects, I'm using here the Renshaw um, yellow flower modeling paste or gum paste. Alternatively, you could use petal paste and obviously then color that with a pro gel, like a yellow pro gel shade of choice. This obviously is quite a vibrant yellow, so you can just, of course, mix a little bit of white and yellow together if you wanted to make a pale yellow color. So when we make the poinsettia, I'm gonna get started now on this. We're going to start off with the, as it's the cyathium which is the little center flower of the poinsettia. I'm going to start off with the little heart one, so it looks almost like a little heart shape. And uh, when we make the cyathium, we're going to do this on um, 28 gauge wires. Now, if you're doing a dark yellow, which is what I'm showing you here, I'm using here green wires. Um, if you're doing a pale yellow, I would suggest probably use white wires, okay? Um, so we're going to take the wires, and you can take several of these at a time. I'm going to take a pair of tweezers here, and with a pair of tweezers, I'm going to come down about two centimeters down the tweezers. You can see here I'm going to um, have the wires just visible on the end, and I'm going to fold this over just to make a little tiny hook on the end of the wires. So you see how I just have these little small hooks um, on the ends of the wires. So these are 28 gauge white or green wires can be used. We're going to measure on your size guide. So remember, size guide is part of the Flower Pro book. Um, and uh, so obviously this is something you get with the Flower Pro book. Measuring off number five size ball of paste, so just like on the Flower Pro, so about one third below the hole, two thirds above the top. And then I would make another, you know, for example, if you're making the medium poinsettia, you'll need nine of these, so nine number five balls of paste. Just keep those underneath a plastic pot, okay, just to stop them drying. Now once we have um, taken, we take the paste, we're going to then just uh, Condition this. Each time you take the little ball of paste out, just condition it with a little bit of vegetable fat shortening. This is going to just get it ready to go into the mold. And then you're going to take your wire here. I'm just going to just dip my wire into egg white, a little bit of egg white onto your wire here. I'm going to just sort of push this into the ball of paste. So it goes into the ball of paste like this. And then you're just going to mold this around the base so you just get like a balloon shape. Okay, so it's just going to make this into a little balloon shape around the base of the wire. Once we get to that point, we're going to take the cyathium, so I'm going to start off with the heart shaped one. So this one, as you can see, has got almost like a heart shape to the top of it. So we're going to take the, uh, place this into the mold, and you can see here that obviously you have this, like the heart shape. So what I do is I actually hold the companion tool, and I'm going to push the paste up against the companion tool, like this, so what's going to happen is you're actually, you see how when you, you do that, when you push the paste up against it, it's going to actually form it into the heart shape. You then rotate it around, and you do the same the other side. So when we pop this out of the mold, you have this little heart shape. And you see it's going to be like almost like a heart pillow. And this is going to give us the, uh, the set first stage. Just like on some of my other Flower Pro, this is... Um, little styrofoam uh, block. I've got little straws in here because when you're working with, remember, fine wires like 28 or 30, they bend very easily. So just pop those into there and you can see how we've got the little heart-shaped ones ready to go. 
We're now going to move on to the next part, um, which is going to be this one here. Now, there actually are two ways to make this, all right? I'm going to show you both options here. So, first way is to do exactly the same as we've just done. So, we're going to take your number five. We're going to work a little bit of vegetable fat, shortening into this. And then, what we're going to do here, we're going to just take your, again, your wire. It's going to hook the wire into the egg white. I'm going to push this into the paste here. Just going to mold this around. Just remember it's really important to condition your paste uh, each time. So again you're just going to mold this down. So what we do here is you push this in. So I'm actually going to sort of push this in with my my fingers here. So I'm actually putting a little bit of pressure here because I want that to actually sort of form into the lips. You're almost squashing that down a little bit and then once you've squashed it down you're then going to just sort of pinch it back with your finger. So you still keep that sort of pillow shape. You can see the pillow shape here. And you see when you take this out of the mold, you'll get this little pair of lips. So it looks almost like a little pair of lips or like a little frog's mouth, okay? The second option is actually to use two different colors of paste. So where actually we make the little yellow lips and then we make this back part in green. So this is another additional, um, as I said, option. So if we do this, we're gonna actually measure off number one size, which is obviously one of the, is the smallest hole on the size guide. And so number one size uh, ball of paste. And again, just gonna just condition this just a little bit, because obviously this little tiny ball will dry out very, very quickly. So just gonna just condition this. Gonna roll it into a little, almost like a little cigar shape. So you want it almost like looks like a lip, okay? So you can use your little a companion tool. You're gonna drop this into the mold like this. And then with my rounded end of my companion tool, just use a little bit of um, corn flour, corn starch onto this. I'm just gonna just press the lips into the mold. So you're just actually just pressing the lips into the mold. I'm gonna take just a little tiny bit of egg white. And I'm just gonna put just a little tiny bit of egg white just onto my yellow part of my paste just to Make that sticky. As I said, it might move around a little bit, but it will be fine once you get that in. I'm going to use um, the Renshaw green here for the green bracts, the outside like leaves, so I'm gonna use this same color, but you could also, of course, color white paste as well, color of choice, okay? It's color of shade of green of choice. So we're going to now just repeat the process. So we're gonna take then a number five size of green, and then we'll take your hooked wire here, so a little bit of egg white on your hooked wire. Just gonna mold this around. Okay, and remember we put a little bit of egg white onto here, so that would just make our lips stick to that. So then you're just gonna just push this in. Just gonna mold this in again, just like I did on the, the other one. You're gonna, and then what I normally do is just sort of flex my mold slightly, just to sort of make sure that the lips are stuck to that. And you see when this comes out, this will give you your little lips will be attached to the, uh, to the green, all right? Now the third one is going to be on the other side of the mold here. And so this looks almost like a little like spring onion or like a little bulb with this like hairy part on the top. So again, we're going to take this. You can see the shape of, shape of this is a little bit almost like a martini shaker. It has like the lid and then it has the sort of the shape here. So we're going to mold this into this shape while it's in the mold. So again, we're going to take the Gonna press this in, just gonna mold around the base. So we're going to take this into the mold. And then what I'm actually gonna do here is I'm just gonna use my little companion tool and I'm actually just gonna sort of roll that into that top part. So you see how I'm actually just sort of rolling it into the top of the mold here. So you wanna create this sort of like, like a pillow effect. So you see how you're gonna get this sort of pillow effect. You can see here from the sides, just like on the other one. And then you then turn it over and you'll do the same on the opposite side here. Just gonna just press this into the, into here, like that. And then when we take this out, you see how you're gonna have this little sort of, like this little top piece on there. So now we're going to feather, so we can either use here the pad. So with your pad, you're gonna use your veining, your little like veining tool, like the little needle tool end of the you see how I'm just gonna just do this little sort of feathering onto the edge here, like this. So that can be done on the hard side, the green side of the pad. Or the alternative is to use actually the back of the, the mat, the silicone mat. And I'll show you the other side. So you're just gonna just do this on both sides. You almost, you want to create this like little 
sort of shaggy. So you're being quite, quite firm with your pressure and you see how you're going to create this little, like almost this feathery top. And then all I do is just going to pull that in, and just sort of pull it in a little bit so you can see it looks almost like this little sort of hairy top on there, okay? And that's how we would do the top of the, um, this one here. So those are the um, Cyathium. So here we've got the, first of all, the heart-shaped one, all right? Then we have, as I said, either option, either you make it all in yellow or you make it in yellow and green, as I've just shown you. And then we have obviously the little one that looks like almost like a little onion, like the feathered top one. Um, so those are your components. So remember for obviously the medium poinsettia, I'm going to show you, I'm going to use three of these, three of these, and three of these, but you can do any combination. There's no set number. Um, each flower varies. So if you did two, three, and three, that would be fine, or two of each for a smaller poinsettia. So these now need to dry. I'm going to move on next to showing you how to make the red colored bracts and then the green colored leaves. So for creating the um, outside bracts um, here in reference to here, so uh, these are obviously what we call the bracts, okay? So these can be made in white, in pink, um, in cream, uh, in red, in burgundy color. So remember, there's lots of varieties here. You can see more of a fantasy one with silver on the edge of it. So you can do all sorts of fun things. This is a sort of, again, a fantasy one dusted silver and then obviously got glitter around the edge. So there's lots and lots of options. I'm using here the uh, red Renshaw um, paste straight out of the pack. Um, you can also, for example, if you add white to that, you can make more of this coral color. And this is a good color if you wanted to make more of a sort of a, a sort of a paler red colored poinsettia. But this is obviously traditional Christmas uh, holiday color. So I'm using, uh, as I said, traditional colors here, but there's lots of fun things you can do with this. So paste wise, um, we're going to measure off your paste. So obviously, um, if you're making the uh, poinsettia, you're going to be needing all three sizes of this if you're making the medium size poinsettia. Um, so the small size ones are number six small. All right. So that's number six that goes through the hole. The medium ones are number seven that goes through the hole, so number seven small. So all of the actual measurements for the red and green parts are all small size. And then for the larger size one, this will be a number eight small, okay? And uh, so what I'm going to do here, I'm going to show you the large size one. So this will be this one here. And uh, so you're going to take your paste. So this is my red paste here. And I'm going to just uh, take this, going to make this into a sausage shape then into basically into a carrot shape. So it just wants to be about um, two thirds of the length of the uh, each of the bracts you're making. So you see this is about approximately two thirds of the length of that. So I'm gonna take my wire here. So this is gonna be, remember the medium, this one here and this one here is 26 gauge wire. I'm using here green wire because I'm working with obviously a dark color. If I was doing a white poinsettia or pastel color like pale pink, I would use white wire, okay? Um, so you're going to take your, but even if you didn't have green wire, white wire would also work fine with the red one. Now we're going to um, brush the egg white. So basically what you're going to do is you're going to make the, the wire, the length of the wire wants to be comparable to the length of the carrot shape. So you're just going to brush some egg white onto your wire. This just ensures that the, it's going to stick because if you only dip the wire into egg white, it's only going to have a little bit of egg white on the top, okay? And then you're going to then take this, you're going to stick this up your carrot like this. So it goes to the top of your carrot like so. So it's pretty much all, always, almost to the top. Just gonna mold this around the bottom here like so. So just mold that around the base. So it looks a little like a chili pepper at this stage, all right? And you can use a little cornstarch on there. And then you're going to use actually the back of the um, the back of the mat. So this is going to be what I've used for the veining. So I'm using the smooth side of this. And then all I'm going to do here is going to just press this down. So I'm just flattening it. All right, so what this does, this acts like a little press. So it just makes it a little bit easier. You've already established a flat back. And it means when you pop it in the mold, you just have to press out to the edges. All right, so just press this in like so. I'm working on a little uh, silicone mat here. Obviously, this little baby one, but you can just use a larger size one or a non-stick surface so it doesn't stick to it. I'm going to take a little um, corn starch, corn flour, just going to put onto my, uh, the, the side it's going to go into the mold. 
Remember in classic KD Sue, you know, we use obviously for a lot of the KD Sue molds, the design team use uh, loose corn flour, loose cornstarch with a brush. You could totally do that. I typically, as I've said on some of my other videos, use a little bag here because it's just not quite as messy and especially in classes. Um, so you just place this into the mold here like so. All right. Um, now, once you get this into the mold, we're going to take then a cosmetic sponge because what we want to now do is we're going to now just work the paste into so you see how you're working the paste into the edge of the poinsettia. So this means the edge will become thinner, you see. And you're just going to work this down. You can just use your fingers here because you have this like almost like this extension on there. So just use your cosmetic sponge just to work the paste down. And just like with all of most of my um, obviously molds have this little channel here to accommodate the wire. Okay. Now this is that is the back of the vena. So obviously when I'd show you the leaf, that's basically made to fit the large leaf, but this is used for all of the stages. So what you do here is you're just gonna take the top of the leaf and just gonna line that up with the top of the petal. And then you see how you want to here, just when you do this, you're gonna just position the wire. So you can see here, just come up a little bit in camera. So you can see the wire is right in the middle of this V shape, all right? So that means we know the wire is straight. And then we're going to just walk down the mold. So just going to use your, so we have a little walk down the mold and a little walk back down here like this. So you're just going to press this like so. Okay. And then when you take this off of the mold, you see how this is going to give you your beautiful vein into the back of the poinsettia. And, but I've also used this on multiple leaves, including, as I said, my new videos on showing the blackberry leaf and the acorn leaf, the oak leaf. I've used this exact same veiner. So this is a wonderful veiner to use for pressing paste, but also to use for other applications. Just gonna flex your mold, and out comes your mold here. And if you've got a little bit of excess paste, sometimes you might get a little bit of um, like an overfill there, so you can just use your scissors if you need to. And just also at the bottom of the the bottom of the paste here, you want to just use your, just mold this around, because you have this little, so almost like this little extension on the bottom there. All right, so it's gonna give you the shape of your, of your um, leaf. Now we're going to soften the edge. So there are two ways to do this. One is to work on the mini pad, one is to work on the back of the mat. And I'll show you both of these. So method one is going to be used to use the pad here. So. I often would just like lift this up, but you see what I'm doing is I'm using my tool here. You're just gonna do sort of just here and there on the edge. And what this means, you're not gonna really disturb the vein in too much if you do it like this, all right? So you're just gonna just, gonna just soften around, just sort of just here and there, just to give a little bit of movement. So that's on the um, hard green side of the pad. The other option is to use the, um, here on the actual veiner. And again, you can just uh, do this. And you see again, just gonna just use your because this is silicone, it obviously doesn't stick. This is gonna just hollow your, so you just get this nice movement on the edge of the brat, okay? Then we're gonna turn this over and we're gonna use the, remember this is the um, little ball tool end, this is the shaft, this is the needle tool. So when I'm used doing the larger bracts or the larger leaves, I'm gonna use the actual shaft of, the, of here and I'm just gonna just pinch that to hollow the base. And then with the, um, the outside petals or the bracts, so these are the large, larger ones, I'm just gonna bend the wire slightly. So you just wanna hold that between your thumb and finger and just bend your wire. So you see how your, your petal has a little bit of a natural curve to it. So now we need to dry these. So remember this has just been curved very slightly. So we dry this in a crepe foam former so it would just dry in a nice natural shape. Now when making the medium, um, the medium bracts, those will also be curved slightly. So you see that the, the uh, the, both the larger and the medium bracket will just be curved slightly. So that will give it. And then when you do the small bracts, remember the small ones are actually on a thinner wire. These are 28 gauge wire. These are just dried straight, but you still can just dry them in the crepe foam former like this, but you don't have to bend the wires on the smaller ones. Okay, it's only the medium and the large size ones you're gonna bend the wire. So obviously you just will continue making your um, components here until you have enough for the poinsettia. So remember in your instruction leaflet, here for the medium poinsettia, which is the one I'm gonna show you the assembly of at the end of this uh, video. I mean, make seven large bracts, five medium, and then three to four small, okay? So now we're gonna move on to the green bracts or leaves. 
So these are the two um, outside parts of the poinsettia. Now, you can also actually make this in red or in pink as well, and then actually dust it, because sometimes when they sort of change color, they'll be sort of partially pink and partially green. Uh, but generally, as I said, speaking, these would be the ones here that would be made in the color of choice. And then obviously these ones are usually made in green. So as I mentioned when I did the cyathium that I'm using here, just a green, uh, green colored paste. So just this is like a moss green color, which obviously you can also color white paste as well, like a gooseberry green or a moss green. So when we uh, do this, we're going to again uh, reference in your little leaflet that comes with the mold. So this makes it really super easy to, to find out. So obviously the bracts, the green bracts, we need three large and we're going to use 24 gauge wire and number 10 small and two small use 26 gauge wire number nine small okay so this is all on your leaflet with your mold so and it also has the number of components so when we um, have the paste so these are your two ball sizes here so this is going to be number nine small so that would just go through the hole for obviously that would be for this leaf here the smaller of the two and then number 10 this will be a number 10 small so it just goes through the hole for obviously this leaf here okay i'm going to show you the larger the larger of the two leaves now you'll notice that um one of the leaves is straight one of the bracts is straight this one has got a curve and this is uh, i'll explain a little bit about how we use the back vena for this as well all right because obviously it follows a curve shape this is just to make the product as natural as possible these are, um, you know, baked, taken from obviously the actual veining of a real poinsettia, so obviously botanically correct as well. So they have this beautiful veining, and of course you have this nice natural lateral vein. So we're going to use the same technique as we used for uh, the red part here. I'm going to take my number 10 small. Again, I'm just going to condition this with a little bit of vegetable, uh, shortening vegetable fat. We always use vegetable fat, not animal fat, because obviously animal fat can go rancid. A lot of people now use coconut oil, so you can also use like a solid coconut oil as well, uh, which works very well. So just like we did on the red part here, we're going to now just make this into a carrot shape. And this carrot shape wants to be about approximately about two thirds of the length of the of this part here. All right. And then again, we're going to just take so if you just need to re-knead it, just want to make sure it feels nice and uh, obviously warmed up a little bit with your fingers. You know, especially during cooler weather, during the winter time and that, sometimes you just need to, to sort of overwork the paste a little bit. So it has, you know, it feels like a little bit warm from your hands. Now we're going to use, uh, this is a 24 gauge wire for the larger leaf, 26 gauge wire for the uh, smaller leaf, okay? So I'm going to take my, so just like I did on the red bracts, I'm going to just sort of measure that, which is about two thirds the length of this. I'm going to take my egg white, just going to brush my egg white up the length of the wire. Now with the leaves, it doesn't actually matter whether you use green or white wire here, because we actually are going to take these anyway. It's just you don't want to put like green wires into say a pale pink poinsettia petal or a white petal, because it's going to look basically ugly. But of course you can put white wire into red or darker colors. Just going to mold this around the bottom, just like we did before, okay? And then we're going to take the, so you can just use a little corn flour cornstarch. I'm going to use the back of the vein here. So again, just going to just flatten this down. So this is going to just going to press onto the top here like so. So you see, it's going to just sort of flatten that out. It just gives you an initial start ready to go into the mold. And then we're going to just put a little bit of corn flour cornstarch onto this, okay? And it's going to go into the, now basically into the mold here. So we're going to pop this into the mold. Make sure your wire feels stable so it goes into here. All right, so it's going to just sort of sit into the, almost like into the middle here. And now we're going to start working this with your cosmetic sponge. So you're going to just sort of work this up. So you have enough paste here to be able to sort of work that up to the top. You can also use your, you know, Dresden tool veining tool just to push the paste into that little small top piece here. But generally, as I said, I use my uh, cosmetic sponge a lot just to sort of be able to sort of get my paste into the mold here. Just gonna work this in. Again, just gonna work this down to the bottom. I'm just gonna turn around. Because in designing these molds, the whole concept behind them is that, you know, you obviously, you want these to look little bit like when you use cutters 
you know, and when we use cutters, of course, we then use a vena, but this is just eliminating the cutter. So basically, it's a it's more efficient way, it's a quicker way to make the flour. But that's why we were thin, thinning out the edges, so you get this sort of thinner edge and a little bit thicker into the center area there, like that. Okay, so then we're going to move on to your, if your wire is a little bit far up, you can just obviously remove it, but once you usually go in about two thirds of the way, the wire is about two thirds of the way into the leaf, okay? So now we're going to take the back. So obviously this is the largest of the components. So pretty much you're just going to line that up with the top and you're going to line that up with the bottom there. So you can see the wire is coming out right here in the V shape. And then just going to, just going to press this over the top like this. Just going to come back and forward. So just walk up and down the mold a couple of times. And when you take this off, you see how you're going to get the beautiful veining onto the back of the leaf. Okay. And, um, now, when we do this leaf, all right, this leaf, as you can see, is curved, all right? So you can see actually the, the vein on this one is actually curved, okay? So how we design this mold is all you do is you don't line it up with the wire, you line it up with the mold. So you can see here, this is the sort of the edge of the mold here. So when you put the, obviously the wire is gonna be coming out like this, but when you actually put this on, you just line it up so the left hand side is going to be lined up directly there like that. So that means when you actually press this on, the, the veining is going to follow that curve because you're actually making the veining going across like this at an angle. And that will give you a more accurate veining. Because if you put this like we've done the other leaves, if you put this straight like this, it means your veining is going to go in the opposite direction. Okay, so just literally, once you get your paste in there, just line this up and it will be perfectly aligned. All right, like there you can see. And then you just press that on the top. So when you take that out, you see how it's going to follow the same length and it will come out the top of the leaf. Just going to just gently take this out of the veiner and you see how this is going to come out like this. All right, so you're going to get this sort of beautiful veining onto your leaves. So just like on the bracts, we're now going to take this and we're going to use your, um, just mold around the bottom here. So we're going to use this on just on the edge here. So you see, the thing is when we do this, what it does, it doesn't then really disrupt the veining. If you do it right on the edge of the pad, so you're just going to use your stick here like this, or all turns, if you remember, if you don't have a pad, you can actually do this onto the veiner. Usually it's easier to hold the veiner up in your hand and you can just sort of just roll just a little bit, just to give a little bit of shape to the leaves. Okay. And then just like before, we're going to now hollow with the shaft of the stick and I'm going to just bend the wire just a little tiny bit, just to give a little bit of movement to it. And then this will then dry into the crepe foam like this. So this will just dry in the crepe foam former. And you see how the leaves will just dry um, like this uh, until they're dry. Once they're actually dried for you know several hours, you make sure that they are totally dry. Um, we're going to take some half width floral tape. So I'm just going to cut my tape with a pair of scissors or with a tape cutter. So this will divide the tape into two. And then we're going to take a take the end of the tape here. There we go. I'm just going to pull this off. And then once the leaves are dry, so these leaves are dry already. Um, a lot of times I would just use like a washcloth or a small towel or a piece of sponge just to sort of like lay the leaves on. And I would do the same with all of the petals as well. And then this just stops them, you know, because they have, remember with the poinsettia, they've got fairly fine tips on there, okay? So then what we're going to do is just going to start with your floral tape, about a, for two centimeters, about an inch down, and you're just going to slide the floral tape up to the bottom like that. So you just bring the tape up to the bottom, come down about two and a half centimeters, about one inch. You're just going to tape down about two and a half centimeters, one inch down each of the components. Um, so we're going to do that on all of the red parts or colored parts. And also we would do this on the leaves as well. So for the cyathium, the little central yellow flowers, we don't have to tape those because we'll do that after they're colored in groups. And so you just will continue just doing the, obviously the components here. And uh, if your fingers are a little sticky, use a little bit of cornflour cornstarch on them, but just about two and a half centimeters down here. And uh, so you can see how you just will lay these up. So these are obviously the other parts uh, that have been taped. And here we have all of the components ready for uh, coloring, which is gonna be the next stage. 
So now we're going to move on to the fun part, which is going to be the coloring. Now remember, poinsettias come in many, many color variations, so the shades of green and various other colors you use may vary depending on the variety you're going to obviously look, make. So first of all, I'm going to start off with a lime green color. So I'm going to use this lime green. I'm going to put a little bit of this onto a napkin. Remember, I never take it straight from the pot. And um, on the cyathium, which is the yellow part, I'm going to take the green here, and I'm just going to sort of just put the green about a third of the way up the bottom. So I'm just going to just sort of brush that around the bottom here, just in a sort of nice natural way. So you would do that on the, obviously on the heart. Now on the, um, the one that's got like the little lips, of course you have the two options that I demonstrated. So this one, of course, doesn't have any more green put onto it because it's already green. But if you're going to do the yellow one, you're basically going to put green all over this, except for where the lips are, which are going to just leave the a yellow color. And then they will have like lipstick put on them because we're going to be putting like red onto the edge of that. You see, so this is going to have the green on this side and you see you just have your little yellow lips there. And then on the one that's the feather top, that will have the green about a third of the way up. So that will be the first color. I'm then going to take, I'm going to use here a ruby. So this is a ruby dust here. I'm going to use again small brush. So first of all, the one that is the heart shape, we're going to just use the ruby dust. Don't load too much color on the brush. And I'm just going to just brush that down the middle of the heart, each side. So you see how you just have this little red on the, um, the tip of the, the heart, okay? On the lips, so think of like applying lipstick. So you're just going to literally just like rub your brush over your lips like that. So you're going to get like a little bit of like red lipstick or pink lipstick on your little lips like that, okay? And of course, if you're doing this one, you just would put the red onto the edge of the lips. And then the one that's like the feather top one, we're going to take a little bit of red here. I'm just going to just put that onto your tips of your feathers there. Just do that carefully because obviously they're a little bit more fragile here like so. Okay. Remember, this could be pink. It could be obviously a uh, burgundy color, depending on what variety you're making. So that will be the um, cyathium. Of course, you continue those making the, uh, the three sets or however many you're making. We now move on to the petals. So remember, these have been taped about two and a half centimeters down. So I'm going to use the, the ruby here. So I'm actually changing out to just into a larger brush here. I'm going to take some ruby. Again, just using this. So I'm going to just sort of brush. So I'm actually going to put ruby all over the front of the petal. So I'm going to do the whole of the front of the petal ruby. And then I'm actually just going to do like a sort of almost like a stripe down the back. So I'm going to leave it so a little bit sort of tonal. So we're just leaving the edge of the natural color. So this one has got ruby and then just a little stripe down the back. And this one will be the same. Of course, this takes a few minutes to do all of the petals. So I've got the other ones already pre-dusted. Pre and then just the ruby down the back here, like so. Okay. Then I'm going to now change out to, going to use an aubergine or like an eggplant color. So it's like a sort of a beet color, like beetroot color. All right, so it's like aubergine eggplant color. And I'm going to just put a little bit of this just sort of down the middle, just to sort of emphasize that vein. Just, so you're just going to use a small flat brush and I'm going to do a little bit of that down the, so you're just going to just brush down the center. So if you watch my Flower Pro showing my red rose, you know on the red rose I use the ruby and then I use some of this color on the top of it, just to sort of give that pop of a darker color. So a little bit of that color there. So that's going to be, and then I'm going to take some of the lime green. I'm going to put a little bit of lime green just at the very base of the petal here. And then I'm going to come with the lime green about a third of the way down the back with the lime, with the lime green here. So just going to be a little bit of green at the bottom here, just about a third of the way down the back of the petal here. And of course, you know, when you're doing this, you can wear gloves. That sort of just makes it a little bit easier to clean your hands. But dusting powder comes off very easily. And um, there we go. So we're going to just put a little bit of, so you have this, you can see here, against the white, you'll have this nice sort of color. So you see how you have this sort of tonal color there, like so. And then we're going to move on next to the leaves. So for the leaves here, so we're going to use 
similar color combination. I'm going to just use a slightly bigger brush with the lime green. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to sort of brush over the central area of the leaf. Just really not right the way to the edge with the lime green color. Using a slight scrubbing action because this is a fairly large surface area. Okay, and then once I've got the lime green onto here, I'm going to just put a, so we're going to use a little bit of red down the center here. So we're just going to just put a little bit of a red sort of highlight down the middle, both front and back. Just a little bit of a red, red here. I'm going to then take some forest green. So this is the only thing I'm using this darker green on. So it's a slightly sort of bluey green color, the forest green. Again, color I've used on my some of my other Flower Pro. And I'm gonna use this forest green and I'm gonna just blend, blend this color so I'm coming from the outside to the inside. You know, dusting is all about layering, just like applying makeup. So it's basically you have your foundation, which in this case would be our lime green. So now we're going to just blend in the forest green from the outside to the inside. So you see how you're gonna get this darker color. I'm gonna do the same on the back. And then once we've done that, we're also gonna just do a sort of a little bit of the forest green just down the center as well. So you just get this slightly highlighted darker area. And then I'm just gonna finish this off with a little bit of the um, aubergine color. So I'm just going to put just a little tiny bit of aubergine on top of the red and I'm just going to do just a little touch of the aubergine just sort of here and there. So you're just literally just going to give like a little accent just sort of here and there on the edge of the leaf. Okay. You can do this also on the back as well. There we go. Now the leaf, once that's, once that's done, we're going to then take your um, leaf and we're going to steam this because the leaf we're going to glaze. All right, so we need to steam this first. And then once this is steamed, we're going to then um, brush leaf glaze or spray lacquer onto this. So I'm just gonna bring in my little steamer here. So I'm just gonna, because I have multiple colors on here, the steam is going to set the color. So I'm just gonna pass this through the steam, a couple of seconds each side. So you see what that's done, it sort of set the color. We have this beautiful, you see the tonal color on here. And then what I'm going to do then is I'm just going to use a little spray lacquer on this or you can put leaf glaze onto there. So I'm just going to lightly spray this. Now remember your spray lacquer, always do this on a protected surface, okay? And uh, so then obviously we just leave this for a few minutes for it to dry and obviously the, out, the base of that will evaporate and it will leave the leaf a more natural uh, look. Now once you have got your uh, components, it's going to change out here for my, bring this down. So then what we're gonna do now is we're now going to actually just put these into three groups, all right? Now, obviously in your um, instructions here, we have the components, all right? So you obviously have three each of the cyathium. So obviously I've got one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And then we have obviously um, on the bracts, we've got seven large, so I've got three, two and two, all right? So you can just, it doesn't have to be equal amounts. It's just sort of basically dividing it into three pieces. And then your medium is five of those. So I've got two, two and one. And then your three to four small ones. So you could do one of each, or obviously one of them has got two. So like this one here has got two, this has got one, this will have, this has got one, okay? And then your leaves, we have obviously three large leaves. So obviously each one has got a large leaf and then we've got two groupings will have a medium or small leaf, all right? Now there are multiple ways to do a poinsettia. The way I prefer personally to do it is to actually build it in three one-third pieces. So think of it like a pie or a pizza. You're almost going to make a sort of a one-third of a circle. And then once you have built your three one-thirds, we then are going to put it together to form the flower. Because this, um, poinsettia is quite a flat flower, and so typically sometimes if you just start taping the middle cyathium and then add the bracts and the red and red and green ones, someone's going to look more, more like a sort of Christmas tree shape. It's going to be a little bit cone shape. Um, and sometimes it could be a little bit tight as well. So I prefer as I said, this method, but as I said there are many, many ways you can put together the flowers. So it's again, whatever you find is more suitable for you, but I'm going to show you the way that I put my poinsettia together next.
So now we're going to move on to the assembly, the final assembly of the poinsettia. So I've already put two groups together. So you see what I'm actually going to do is I'm thinking this like a third of a cake or a third of a pizza. Um, this is just a way that I personally found it's easier to put the poinsettia together so it doesn't get too tight because I said poinsettia is a fairly flat flower, uh, meaning that it doesn't have a lot of depth to it. But also it's, um, as I said, typically when you put together a flower like this, I like to do this in segments. Now how we do this is we're going to first of all take the um, obviously your three groups. So here we have the, the cyathium, which is going to be the center part of the flower here. So all I'm going to do here is just using a pair of tweezers. I'm just going to just sort of bend the, each of them out just slightly. So the three of them will just sort of sit together like that. So we have one of each of the groupings. And then I'm going to take some floral tape, so I'm going to use half with light green tape. Now, some varieties of poinsettia, you might use uh, dark green tape, or you might use a moss green. But you see how we have the, the three little uh, cyathium here. And you're pretty much just going to stay on the spot. You're not really going to move too much. Now, when we do the poinsettia, as, we, as the flower comes out, so the wires become a little longer, okay? So what I'm going to do here is for my petals, or the red brats, I'm going to bend these about five millimeters, all right? So just a little bit less than a quarter of an inch, all right? So about uh, three-eighths of an inch. So you're just going to do this about, um, as I said, just about five millimeters. So I'm just going to bend the, and you can, of course, bend all of them like, like this, okay? And so you just will go through and just going to just bend these. So the, the actual bracts, these red bracts here, these are just going to be bent there. And obviously these are on finer wires. When you come to the heavier wires, because this is obviously on a 26 gauge, you can use a pair of uh, pliers here. So these are just like needle nose pliers. I'm just showing you this so you sort of understand what I'm doing here. Okay. So anyway, so then we're going to start actually building the flower. Now, so when we when we build this, you're going to start off, so obviously in this particular grouping, I just have one of these small. And you see how this is going to sit directly at the bottom of the, of the cyathium. So you're just going to go around with your floral tape. And then I'm going to put in then my next one. You can see it's going to come directly at the bottom here, like so. It's going to come around. All right, so think of it almost like you're building like a sort of a triangle shape. You see how everything wants to come fairly tight in here. And then you're going to then build in your large. You see again, everything is coming very, very tight right in the center here, like so. Now remember on a poinsettia, you know, there's no set number of components, unlike say a lily, which always has six, you know, three sepals and three petals, or an orchid, or which usually has five, you know, there's there's no set number of so. If you, um, but as I said, you can follow along with obviously our suggestions. So you see how I've built this um, flower. Now you notice I haven't um, haven't steamed the flower um, because it just is more sensible. A little bit like when we do hydrangeas in my Flower Pro um, hydrangea from my Ultimate Filler Flowers, you just assemble the whole head of hydrangea, then steam the whole thing. Okay, um, so it's because it's easier rather than picking up you know fifteen or twenty separate components. So you see how this is going to be built like this. Then we're going to take the the brack, the green bracts. So those are going to be about 10 millimeters, all right, so actually about about two-thirds of an inch, okay? So about 10 millimeters long here. So we're just going to just bend that about 10 millimeters out. And we're going to just take the two of those. Next one is about, so it's about five-eighths of an inch, okay? And then these will go in here. So obviously this is going to go in to here like this. So obviously each of these is going to have a large a large one on and then obviously two of these will have a small one. Now what you don't want to do is to have two small ones side by side you see so like if, for example when we put it together so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put this actually on the other side of this one so just sort of have a look and see how it's going to look. But if you um, if you did put it in the wrong place you can easily untape it. And so then we're going to take these three components together. So how we do that, so we're just going to take down. Right, and don't worry too much about the position of the petals at the moment. Just be careful of the points of these because they obviously are, um, as I said, quite, um, quite fine. So now what we're going to do is going to take a wire here. This is a 20 gauge wire. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to place the 20 gauge wire just here. Okay, and I'm just going to start taping the 20 gauge wire. And then I'm going to take the next 
segment here, which is going to be I'm going to put then the small. This is the smallest one here, which has just got the single leaf. So you see, this is going to just come together here, like this group in here, like this. And you see, this is going to. You see how they're going to come together, and then you're going to just take this, and then the third group in is going to go here, like so. You see. So the third grouping will go there, so they're all sort of like level at this point. And then we're going to just tape this down. And then once you get this tape down, so remember, don't worry too much about the position of everything at the moment. Now, if this was going to go obviously into a cake, like into a Christmas cake, of course, you know, a cake is either three inches traditionally here in the UK or four inches in the US and other parts of the world. So you can, of course, cut this to whatever length you, your depth of your cake would be, all right? So, so then you're going to then usually just cut the extra wires off, like this. And then you're just gonna just tape around the end of this. So you have a nice little, even if you're doing this in like air drying clay to use on say a gift package or a wreath, you want to always tape the end of the stem. So you see, so you don't have an exposed wire there. So literally you just sort of wrap that around, fold it over, and then tape back on yourself. So you see you have a nice, just like when we do a corsage in fresh flowers. So now what we're going to do is just going to take your, your, so you see, so and having five, obviously five of the green, and then we literally can just take your, now when you're using sugar, all right, so you'll have to be a little bit more careful than you would on say air drying clay. But what we're going to do now is we're going to just going to take the, the bracts here, the red bracts, you see how I'm just sort of arranging them. So my smaller ones are sort of sitting in the middle here, like so. Um, so you have this um, beautiful arrangement, but you can see the sort of the depth of your flowers. All right, so you can see obviously the, so everything is nice and flat um, on the top. So now at this point, we're going to steam it. All right, so we're gonna now steam it. And that's really gonna bring those colors to life. You can sort of see that sort of aubergine eggplant color, which looks very defined at the moment. When we steam it, it's gonna be much more sort of natural looking. Um, and of course, when you first steam it, it's gonna look very shiny, but that will disappear. That dissipates after about an hour or so. Um, so remember, we're gonna steam this. Now remember, don't over steam it. All right, so you're just gonna just gently rotate this in the steam, but you can see how I'm just going to come underneath here as well. All right, and that's going to, but you see how the color, but you see how you're then going to get this sort of highlight of color onto your, onto your flower, okay? And then uh, you need to just put this to one side, let it dry, and um, once this is dried for about an hour, all right, this, as I said, this, this shine is going to disappear. It's going to have just more of a natural luster to it, but it's going to also um, help to when you use uh, especially dark colors or defined colors, you know, the steaming will give a more natural look. It does away with the sort of dry, chalky look. Um, so here you can see uh, you have the beautiful poinsettia and uh, obviously, you know, can be done in many, many colors. Um, so obviously you can see here a beautiful pink one um, and obviously a white one with silver on. So fantasy poinsettias are also beautiful as well. You know, now we buy artificial silk poinsettias in blue and purple and all different colors for Christmas. But as I said, this is a very, very traditional one. Um, and as I said, uh, I hope you will enjoy using my uh, Flower Pro poinsettia and back vein. Remember, the back veiner is very useful for many other leaves as well. And uh, we'll have fun making these. Um, and uh, those of you who obviously follow us on our face Flower Pro Facebook page, you know, hopefully you'll post your beautiful poinsettias, different colors and things over the next coming weeks uh, to show us all your beautiful uh, poinsettias you've made. So until next time, sweet wishes, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.